Landa Brown and I'm here with Vasily Petrenko, the new music director of the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra. Wonderful to see you and congratulations for the new position. Thank you. Thank you, Landa. Good to be here. And welcome to London. First of all, I have to say personally, how has the move been and is the family coming with you? Yes, we just moved uh, about 10 days ago by now. It's obviously the state of movement when you're full in cotton boxes and you're still figuring out uh, within the house what to put where. Sure. You're assembling the furniture, you, you're doing all the stuffs, uh, but we are quite happy uh, so far with a, with a house and uh, let's see where it will lead. And I know that you are really excited about the new position, we're going to speak more about your plans, but is there an excitement from the family about being in London and what are they looking forward to taking in? I think for the family it's definitely an excitement. It's a step uh, into different territory comparing to our relatively rural life in the Wirral over the last 15 years. So we're now in the, one of the most hustle and bustle city of the world. Uh, I guess we will have plenty of new friends uh, from the all different backgrounds. I think that there's a huge Russian community in London, Russian speaking community. And uh, I think for my daughter to go to the new school, it's also a very exciting moment. Absolutely. I wish them all the very, very best. Thank you. And you're joining the RPO at a very exciting and interesting time. What is the state of the orchestra at the moment? Uh, RPO is coming to its 75th anniversary season and uh, the orchestra in a great shape already. Uh, but to me, uh, it is important, it's probably one of the most important things for any orchestra I'm working with uh, is that the orchestra is eager to work, eager to improve on an everyday basis. That we all acknowledge our great past, our great concerts, but we're not stopping with it, but we are progressing forward. With art, I think it's endless process of refining and of perfectation first of all for yourself, for every day. And to me, it's one of the principles of my life that every day you have to be better than the previous day for yourself, first of all. And every next day, you have to aim to be better. And for the orchestra, I mean, there's been time where they've not been together, been able to sort of work together during lockdown in certain ways. As you look forward into the future, are there new things that you've had to learn about the orchestra? Obviously, you've worked with them before in the past. Uh, there's many things. I think we all learn about ourselves, first of all, over the last 16 or 18 months when people were locked down or not able to work, not able to perform, not able to gather. Uh, I think in many parts of the world, and of course in the UK, uh, this social life, the mass social life, the value of it, I think increased. People understood more how much do we miss of not being able to share emotions, to share experiences, uh, being in close proximity to each other. Mm. Uh, I think for arts it was a very difficult time. Obviously the, all the industry was hit very hardly by all this time. We did have support from government and we're very thankful for the government for all the support. We did have a huge support from the public who mm. donated money, who donated the tickets, even if they were not able to come to the concert. We feel the support, but uh, it's still challenging. Yes. I think the music and the culture in general will play a very vital role in the recovery from the current state of mind and state of pandemic. Yeah. Mentally, people need this food for brains, for their minds, uh, just to be able to come back to some sort of normality of and the world won't be the same as it went in 2019 there will be different world but i think this unity uh, this understanding that we are social phenomenon humans uh, this is very important for the future and as the world opens up what can we expect from the RPO, what, what do you think has been learnt during this time and what are you looking forward to sharing with the audiences? Plenty of the things, uh, starting from inclusivity or diversity, we, you know, we found uh, ourselves that we should include everyone in our family and we have to be included in the other families. So uh, I think it's even more than ever, it's cleaner now that uh, we have to come to the people. 
Absolutely. It was in the small groups possible, so that the people were performing for the small groups of uh, the public, in the small groups of musicians and quartets, in some other duets in the chamber music. But I think as the orchestra, it's exactly the same feeling. We uh, learn more about the inclusivity. Uh, London is one of the most diverse cities in the world. And of course, there's a huge amount of people, huge amount of public who who are not coming to the mm -hmm. classical music concerts. I think for us, the aim and the task, especially now, when the new possibilities will be open for sure, when the new ways will be open for everyone and for the, all the layers and all the different parts of society to bring this public in. But to do so, we are always aiming for excellence. So for us, what I was referring to, that every day is better than the previous yes. one, in terms of improving of the orchestras on a day-by-day -day basis, in terms of discovering the new horizons, discovering the new ways of playing, discovering of uh, the, the new worlds in the music. For us, uh, this is day-by-day -day task, and this is what we're aiming for. We're also hoping, uh, at the moment, we hope that all the touring will be possible with fewer restrictions than it is now. We are here to make the life of the, pe of the humans, mm -hmm. of the people, of the citizens of the place better Absolutely. in London and outside. We are great ambassadors. For any city to have an orchestra, uh, if you're listening to the orchestra from the different cities, it's the best advertisement for the for, for the, the city, city. Yes. it's this sort of soft power which comes to your mind straightforward and because to understand the music you don't need to know any actual languages mm -hmm. this is very international <laughs> position as musical director, you've, you've held uh, the position as principal conductor uh, at the Liverpool, Liverpool Philharmonic for 15 years. How does this position now just expand you personally and how does it make you feel having, having this position? Well, you know, I think they, there's not much difference, at least from the work which I've been doing in Liverpool uh, over the years. It is obviously work with the orchestra at the weeks when I'm here doing the rehearsals, recordings, concerts tours, uh, but it is also overseeing the whole artistical direction, uh, repertoire-wise, uh, strategy-wise, and uh, here in London especially, it's even like geography-wise, which halls do we perform in? The, di the big difference, I guess, will be in Liverpool, it is Monopoly. It is the only Royal Liverpool Philharmonic Orchestra yes. in the town, well respected, well supported by everyone. If you talk to anyone from there, about what is the classical music for you, they'll say Royal Liverpool Philharmonic Orchestra. Uh, but here in London, uh, obviously the city is much, much bigger, but we have a big competition, and we have the orchestras which performing in the different halls. We don't have our own hall, mm -hmm. so we perform in the different halls. But uh, this is to find our way, to find our distinctive face, to find our projects which will be really identified with Royal Philharmonic Orchestra. Now, well, congratulations. It's been lovely to see the energy in the room as you've rehearsed for the first time in this position. And um, I wish you all the very, very best. Thank you, Landa. Thank and you. please, come to our concert. Absolutely. You're very welcome. <laughs> Thank you very much.